Vermilion Block 380 was an oil producing platform owned and operated by Mariner Energy, a Houston based oil company. Located at about 80 nautical miles from the Louisiana coast, the platform produced about 9.2 million cubic, pu cubic feet of natural gas each day and 1,400 barrels of oil during the last week of August alone. The site was producing oil, and this morning it caught fire. Just after 9 a.m. local time, workers on a nearby oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico spotted the fire and called the Coast Guard. All of Vermilion 380's 13 crew members were rescued from the Gulf of Mexico, where they had jumped into the water to save themselves from the flames. The Coast Guard originally reported that one of the crew members was injured, but Mariner Energy later said that no one was hurt. This platform was already producing, and it was in what is deemed shallow water. It was in about 340 feet of water, according to the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. Because it was a producing well in shallow water, it was not covered by President Obama's moratorium on so-called deep water drilling, which targets rigs in 500 feet of water or more. The Deepwater Horizon rig, whose explosion on April 20th killed 11 people and caused one of the worst environmental disasters ever, that was in more than a mile of water. Unlike the Deepwater Horizon, Vermilion 380 also sat on the ocean floor instead of floating like a deepwater rig. Still, ban or no ban, everyone's on eggshells now, wondering about potential further damage to the beleaguered and battered Gulf of Mexico. The Associated Press initially reporting that the Coast Guard said a mile-long oil sheen had been spotted near Vermilion 380 after it blew up. But as with the report of the workers' injury, Mariner Energy had another story, telling CNBC that there was no sign of a spill whatsoever. The Coast Guard later walked back their original report, saying that no one could see a sheen. The moratorium, which is designed to assess and upgrade safety regulations on deep water drilling rigs, that moratorium is currently scheduled to expire November 30th. No word yet on whether or not today's incident at Vermilion 380 may cause the White House to revise that deadline. Take your time with that decision, folks. According to Mother Jones today, there are only about 33,000 miles of pipeline and 50,000 wells in the Gulf. See all those dark blue dots? Those are all the all the platforms and rigs in the Gulf. Did we also mention that it's hurricane season? Yeah, no rush. Joining us now is Bob Kavnar, oil and gas industry veteran and founder and editor of The Daily Hurricane. Mr. Kavnar, thanks for joining us. Happy to be with you, Rachel. Um, usually you either see something or you don't. Um, is there an oil spill associated with this disaster here at this rig or is there not? Well, what's been reported to me, Rachel, is that the wells did automatically shut in when the uh, fire occurred or when the, with the leak that they had on the platform occurred. So I think the, the wells themselves shut in pretty quickly, but often what you get here is you'll get some residual oil on the platform, and sometimes when they flood the platform with firewater the way they did today, you'll wash that into the water, and that's probably what they saw. So what's the biggest risk at this point from this particular rig for what's happened there so far? Should we be watching this site in terms of potential further environmental damage here? I believe that this is being a, sh being a shallow well, the well heads and all the valves are actually above the surface of the water so you can see them. So it's a little different than the deep water wells where everything is done by remote operated vehicle. Also in 300 feet of water you can actually put divers in to look at the at the seafloor around the wells so you could monitor much more closely i think the risk of something further happening here is pretty low but i got to tell you this is going to shed new light or i raise new questions about shallow water and how the, it's being affected by the uh, moratorium for the deep water well i know that there was an initial shallow water moratorium after the deep water disaster at least right. if i remember correctly but right now it's deep water drilling not production wells and not wa wells in water in water that is this shallow that are subject to that moratorium is there anything that is fundamentally right. qualitatively safer about drilling in shallow water than there is in drilling in deep water the, the primary uh, thing that ma makes it different, I'm not sure it's one is less safe than the other. I think the risk is higher of something going wrong in the deep water simply because you have a floating facility where these actually sit on the bottom. But you still have that severe risk of spill and fire on, on, both, on both facilities. The advantage that you have with shallow water is that you can get to it easier than you can with deep water. So it can be fixed faster generally than, than a deep water spill or deep water blowout. Are incidents like, like these, are, are they outliers? Um, or, or 
Is there a trend of safety problems in the drilling industry right now? You know, the industry will say, well, this is an anomaly, but you have enough anomalies, you link them together, you have a trend. And uh, the timing of this could not be worse, in, in my uh, view, because of the moratorium and because of all the questions that are being raised about offshore production. I do think that this is going to raise a lot of issues on the regulatory side. We, there are incidents that happen. It spills or, or small spills and small uh, incidents, but when you have fire and when you have people in the water, you've got a problem. And I think we need to look at what those regulations are before we go forward. Bob Kavanaugh, oil and gas industry veteran, currently the editor and founder of The Daily Hurricane. Bob, thanks very much for your insight tonight. Happy to join you, Rachel.